Hi, this is the welcome video. Gosh, on the other one I started to say email and I started to do it yet again. Okay, so this is going to be like a generic welcome. I literally only changed the 141 on the top of this. It's exactly the same thing I used for 124. So if you're in both classes, you've already seen the whole thing. Um, if you have met me, you're already going to know some of what I say. If you've never met me, hi, nice to meet you. Eh. Well, no, we don't shake hands. It's fist bump, elbow touch. It's whatever, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess I should stop now, right? So anyway, Bio 141, it's environmental science with lab. Linda Bernhardt, Mrs. Bernhardt, Ms. Bernhardt, Professor Bernhardt, Professor B, whatever. I answer to a lot of things, just be, you know, not rude and we'll be good to go. So we're going to go over the basics. I'm going to tell you some of who I am, how the course is going to be done, that kind of stuff. Some of this is going to be different because I made a separate syllabus video and part of this I usually use to get into the syllabus. The reason is this is the PowerPoint I use when we are meeting in person. I am doing this so you still get the in-person feel even though we are not meeting until week three. So here we go. Starts off saying me, but there's not a picture of me. I mean, why would you need a picture of me when me is right here in the corner of your screen? Instead, I use this to start off. You've got one cat, which is Zoe. She lives in my youngest's room all the time. You have my two babies, which is Fang and Osiris. Yes, there's a reason for their names. No, I'm not going to tell you right now. But if you ask or if you want to say, hey, I think it might be because blah, 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 I'll totally confirm or deny whatever. And in person, if you want to ask them too, we can talk about it. I'm good. I will always talk about my kitties. And then the third picture, those three humanoids, those are three of the most important people in my life. And those are old pictures. So here are some updated pictures. Updated because they're still like two years old. Nicholas, that's my nephew. I call him Nickel because when he was little, I used to go, Nickel's in a pickle because his auntie likes to tickle. And then I would tickle him like crazy. And I did it enough times so when he was like, I don't know, four, I could just look at him across the room and go like this because it was, oh no, it's Mr. Tickle. And then he would just go crazy. It was hilarious. Um, he would probably be appalled that I just told you all that because he is now 18. Fang and Osiris down there, they've grown up, they're much larger, and then of course you've got my kids. My oldest, Pax, is the one holding the potato chip bag in front of his face. Yes, both my kids have insanely long hair. Pax has the thickest hair on the planet sometimes, I think. It is insanely thick. Later, if you want, I'll show you a more updated picture, something where you can actually see the hair. It's kind of funny. Okay. Oh, I was about to fast forward, not fast forward, I was about to click forward. I forgot to tell you the important parts about me. Okay, I have a tendency to forget a lot and I know there's important stuff that helps you better understand who I am as a teacher so you can be better prepared for what comes at you. So let's see, uh, first off we'll go with diagnoses. Why not, right? Everybody has some kind of a label. I I have asthma, that's a good one to remember to tell you because you're gonna hear me cough and gag and stuff like that. And um, it'll be because on occasion it just closes and I start coughing. So in person, if I start doing this and I can't get it under control, clearly I can't just rip off the mask and hit an inhaler. That's like the worst thing I could do right now. I will have to like, mm, and I will leave the room and I will have to go outside so I can remove the mask and hit the inhaler. Um, if anyone has paid attention to the rules about mask wearing, a lot of times people say if you have asthma, don't wear the mask. However, you kind of still need to because if you're trying to protect other people from you, if you have something and you're trying to do the double barrier of yourself against them to try to protect everybody around you, you kind of need to. So yes, sometimes it might make it a little more difficult for me, but it's really not that bad. It's going to get kicked up anyway. And one of the things that kicks it up the most is when people wear a lot of perfume or cologne. So when you watch the syllabus video, if you haven't already, and I go on and on about not wearing a lot of that, that's why. Because if there's too much fake scent on somebody, it 
I mean, and this even works with smoke. If there's too much smoke on somebody, it'll make my airway start to close and I start to choke. Um, so please just be careful with that. Anyway, got the asthma issue. Um, also, I'm on the autism spectrum, so yes, hi. If you've never considered yourself knowing an autistic person, that would be me. It's not a bad thing, and it just means that my brain works a little bit differently. Uh, one of my main things is the fact that a lot of times I am not aware that what is about to come out of my mouth might not be appropriate. I honestly will talk and look at everybody to make sure that what I'm saying is not wrong because sometimes I don't realize I have overshared until I see someone go. And then I'm like, oh, mental note, don't talk about that. And so I don't do it to be, um, to be rude or disrespectful or anything. It's just I really do have to go by, as I learn the people around me, what is appropriate and what is not. So I have certain rules in place, but you know, different people, different things, that kind of stuff. It also means that my thought process might be quite a bit different, but that honestly is what I think makes me a more interesting teacher because a lot of times you have always been taught this. This is it, this is it, this is it. Well, this is never it for me. This might be the core, but my brain's gonna be like this. So I might be over here and then woo, come over there. A lot of times I might be talking about something, it's gonna seem like I went way off topic, and I do go off topic, not gonna lie. But more often than not, if you pay attention, you will see there is a connecting thread and it will bring it all back around. And by the end of a lesson or by the end of the quarter, most of my students are stunned at how much stuff they remember solely because of the crazy way that my brain goes around it. So yeah, there you go. Also ADHD and stuff like that, dyslexic. Um, so that whole huh, squirrel thing, yeah, that's me. Like seriously, can't help it. But I don't know if I'd really want to if I could because I have so many trains of thoughts at all times, but that's also how I'm able to connect as much as I do. Okay, I also have PTSD, general anxiety, social anxiety, hypervigilance. Um, oh yeah, sensory processing disorder. I forgot to mention that in the other one. And that equates to the, the smell thing also. And I can't handle very loud noises. When people are too loud, you'll see I'll be like this. And it's because I'm trying to adjust. If I've been somewhere where people are too loud, I've actually been known to do this. And it's not that I'm not listening, it's I'm trying to control the amount of um, stimuli coming into my body. Other times, if I can't control one, you see I'll just close my eyes. It's because that's one of the easiest things to control. If there's too much going on around me, close my eyes. I can at least remove one of the senses just like that. Um, so yeah, as for the anxiety stuff, um, I can't stand being center of attention. I do not like people just staring at me. And so teaching where everyone turns and looks at you, it's a little problematic, but Maybe that's why I like the smaller campus. It makes it easier because I feel more connected. The first day we meet will be the most awkward, but then after I get to know you, I loosen up. It becomes a lot easier. However, when I am talking, lecturing, whatever, if people are just sitting there staring at me and not interacting, that's when it starts to amp up. And then you will see, I will start talking so fast, it's insane. I will be aware I'm talking fast, but I will not be capable of stopping it. So if that ever happens, all you need to do is, you know, raise your hand and ask me a question. It doesn't even have to be anything important. It's just by you asking me a question, it forces me to put on the brakes and kind of reboot. It's like a human speed bump. It helps me. So there you go. Um, okay, the other part is that I dropped out of school after the ninth grade and I got a GED as soon as I turned 18. I had already moved away from home. I left home early and worked. I have had a lot of crazy jobs. At 18, I was a cocktail waitress in a strip club. And in my 30s, I was a diesel mechanic at a truck stop garage. So I have had a range of jobs there's a whole bunch in between. If you want to know, ask me, I'll tell you. Um, in my 30s, another mechanic wanted to go to college and he didn't want to go alone. So he asked me to go. I told him I was too old to go to college. He told me I was too old not to. And I went, huh, good point. 
So I took the entrance exam and went to Valdosta State University. And um, I tell you this because one, taking that entrance exam, I did not do well in the math portion because even though I could do math, I did not know vocabulary. And so when the question came up, what is an integer? I felt really stupid and just started randomly clicking buttons. And so my college career began with learning support math 097. 097 is the lowest math you can take. And then I did 097, 099, then I had to take the compass, so then I could take college algebra, so then I could actually be taking the courses I was supposed to be taking for the degrees. When I started college, I pretty much was convinced I was really, really stupid. And part of that was upbringing, the way things were. A lot of it has to do with the fact that my sister is really smart. I have an older sister and she is that person. She's the one, she graduated high school at the age of 17. She did college in three years and she started Duke Law School before the age of 21. So she is literally that person. Meanwhile, I'm over here with, you know, dyslexia and attention issues and um, just feeling straight up stupid and having dropped out of school. So when I started college, that was in January of 2005. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with learning. Loved it. Apparently I've always liked learning, I just didn't like class. And college helped me tremendously and it was my first semester in college when I discovered I was not stupid. And that was a pivotal moment in my, in my life. Because imagine going for over three decades convinced that you were stupid and then finding out you weren't actually dumb the whole time. It was just phenomenal. And so I, I couldn't get enough. I just kept taking more and more classes. So December of 2009, I graduated with honors with a bachelor's in science and biology and a bachelor of arts in philosophy because yes, I was a double major. That following January, January 2010, I started a master's in biology. That summer, I started a master's in public administration. Um, I think it was 2012 when I finished the Master's in Public Administration. So whenever you see my email signature, MPA, that's what that stands for. I started a doctorate for it. I really, really wanted that doctorate, but then stuff happened in life, which kicked in the PTSD, made it where I couldn't complete a semester. I got an incomplete, never finished that. Still trying to get back in there, but then again, like I said, life happened. I have multiple jobs and I just don't have time for the classes. I'm hoping that the fact that I'm married and my oldest works full time, that the others will be able to start picking up more of it so then I can start to let some of my jobs go so then I can get back to finishing my education because I desperately want that doctor name. I want to be Dr. Bernhardt and I wanna hang my GED on the wall as well as that because I just love the idea of becoming a official Dr. Bernhardt when I didn't even finish high school. I like that, it's, you know, I don't know, be cool. But not a doctor yet, haven't earned it yet. So I think that's mostly the stuff about me. Um, I'm sure there's more, but yeah, we'll get to it eventually. So in the syllabus video, I go on and on and on about keeping your mask on. So when we're meeting in person, <clears throat> you have to keep your mask on. I have these images here to explain part of why it's so important. Um, the one in the I Love Jesus hat, that's my mother. And you see me peeking in in the corner. That was one of our doctor's visits. My mother is 77. She will be 78 this March. March 8th is her birthday. And it just occurred to me, I think that's when we have our final. But anyway, March 8th is her birthday. She'll be 78. She's also, she has high blood pressure and she has, um, she's in stage three kidney disease. And I know one of the things we're trying to get her a new eye doctor because we just had her move closer to here. And um, her previous eye doctor has been keeping an eye on it because apparently she keeps having bleeding behind her retina. So again, not the epitome of health. I just moved her from Carrollton to Tucker. And so she literally lives in between where I live and our campus at GMC. And so my plan is every single Monday, um, when I finish class, I can go spend time with my mom. And I'm very much looking forward to that. But if you 
take your mask off during class, that puts me at risk, which then would put her at risk, which makes it to where either I have to choose putting my mother at risk or telling her, no, I can't come see you because somebody in the classroom decided they wanted to take their mask off. So please just keep your stupid mask on. It would be very nice. Um, the mask is not just to protect you, it is to protect people from you. Now, the other person here, that is uh, one of my oldest and dearest friends, his name's Jim. We met in 1989 and 1991 is when we became very good friends. And I remember it very well because we had a mutual friend. Um, it was his best friend all growing up. He grew up with him, was his absolute best friend. And he was one of the best friends I ever had and um, was pretty much one of the most special people on the planet. And he was killed in 91. And so Jim and I became very good friends because when when you lose somebody that means that much to you, much less when they're taken from you, because yeah, he was killed, like murdered. Um, when that happens, you kind of have to latch somewhere. And so me and Jim, we became massively good friends because that's kind of our way of keeping our friend Brian alive, if that makes sense. Well, Jim is not a healthy person. Um, basically diabetes that he did not truly take care of and that has caused a whole slew of issues now. This image was taken in the very end of June, very beginning of July of 2020. It was last year. It's not COVID. It's just all of his other health issues. Um, ended up with having him in there. He ended up in a coma for a while. He came out. He's one of those rare people who came out of it. And it's kind of like hurting massively to do this now because yesterday he was brought back to the hospital, back on a ventilator and low oxygen levels and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I was just told this morning that, <clears throat> that he is going downhill and they have now intubated him as well. And so I don't know what to expect. And so that has me nervous. And then of course, just to, you know, keep 2021 the way it is so far, I then got noticed right after that, that my nephew, Nickel, the one you just saw a moment ago, he is now tested positive for COVID right now. So a little bit of stress. So when I glare at you because you start thinking of taking your mask off, um, this is why. So please just keep your mask on. Now, here where it says syllabus time, we don't have to go over the syllabus because there's a whole other syllabus video. There you go. What should you do? Well, this is the environmental science class. Your textbook is extremely important for your tests. There's also extra quiz thing every week. If you do that extra credit quiz every week and you use your book so you better understand it, that's the best way to go through your tests. Most of the stuff that I want you to know is going to be what I am telling you, what I am actively, practically pushing down your throat. This class, we will be watching movies, documentaries. We're gonna compare it to reality. When I say compare it to reality, it's because like one of the things I normally like us to get to watch is Aaron Brockovich. It's a real story, but it's a movie based on the real story. It has Julia Roberts in it, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so I have different ways to bring the topics to you so you can really get invested and it's not just a textbook. So this is honestly one of my favorite topics. It's one of my, our subjects, it's one of my main passion things is environmental science. So the real thing you need to do is pay attention. When I say to read this, actually read it. When I say, hey, this is what we're about to cover, take a look at it. Try to see it more than just as boring because it's life pretty much. And the fact that we are in the midst of a pandemic and that's part of what I talk about in environmental science, it gives us a lot of stuff to talk about. 
Now here, it's the fact that this is a hybrid course. Um, yeah, that means you have to do your online work. Now, the way my courses are set up, if you don't do your online work anyway, there's no way you can pass the class. So you already have to do it. But the GMC rule is if you miss more than three of your hybrid assignments, the ones that are literally marked hybrid, then I have to withdraw you. I do not have a choice. It is not my choice. It's not my rule. It is the GMC rule. It's because your hybrid assignments count as an attendance. So where GMC has the attendance requirement that you have to attend class, that's the same thing for turning in your hybrid assignments. So just make sure you do it. Email protocol, you want to send me an email? That's great, but please make sure that you don't start it way too personal, like what up and sup and that kind of thing. These are all examples of ways people have emailed me in the past. I would also appreciate proper grammar, punctuation, and actual sentences. I am one of those people, I text in full sentences. And you would, it would be great if you could remember the person you're emailing is your teacher. So try to show me you know how to write when you email me. Um, yeah. Here I always ask if there's any questions before we get started, but this is a video, so you can't ask them anyway. But if you thought of any questions, shoot me a message and I will answer it. That is it. Yeah, I'm just leaving it blank. Um, make sure to do your online work. We are not meeting in person until week three. Keep up with online. I'm going to be posting stuff. I keep remaking videos. I have plenty of videos on the YouTube channel already, so feel free to take a look at them if you want to. Can't guarantee they're going to match perfectly with this quarter, but you know, hey, if you just want to look at stuff, feel free. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So yeah, get to work. Get all your stuff done. And I will meet you in person on the 25th.